All right, ladies and gentlemen, friendly reminder, tomorrow we, no. Friendly reminder that you obviously have Thanksgiving break, and if you need me to tell you that, then something has gone horribly awry in your life. When you come back on Monday, you have uh, a vocab quiz, anything from 1 through 20, and a primary source. Fun fact, it is cart political cartoons. Super excited about it. Uh, Tuesday, any word off the list I can use, and you have a lecture. Wednesday, you have a test. Focus and map are due. There's no primary due on, on Wednesday because it will be due on Monday. <laughs> um, it's due by 8.30 a.m. off the Questions, concerns, comments. We only have one more focus in 2021. So week 16, you have a focus. Week 17, we're working on our review packet. Week 18 is exam week. So things are happening very quickly. Yes, Mr. Jackson. 150 points. You haven't seen how thick it is. Would you like me to cut it back? <laughs> they did it on their own. What was the important I wanted to spend time with you, Isabel. Thanks. <coughs> okay, this is the most important question of the day. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is your favorite thing about Thanksgiving, and I am judging. Go. I gotta think. Oh my god. Family. Oh my god, I'm gonna vomit. No, like food-wise. I don't care oh, about like family oh. crap. I want food. What is your favorite food on the table? Oh. And no one writes tur gravy? Yes, ma'am. Seriously? Okay, okay. Cornbread stuffing? Yeah, stuffing is my mom's stuffing is good. My mom's stuffing is good. Pumpkin pie? Okay. Janelle, I wanted to thank you for a pumpkin pie girl. Okay. Do you buy it or you make it? Oh, oh so it's a whole thing, huh? Okay. Max. Turn to your neighbor and share your answers. Hell yeah, pecan pie. You hate Thanksgiving? Oh, okay. Oh, hell yeah. Three. Two. One. The only correct answer was apple pie. So all of you are wrong. The best. Never had pie. That's pin up you too. Chocolate pudding pie is delicious. What? That's a good choice. Reese's peanut butter cups are now making pies. Yeah, that shit looks delicious. I'm just saying, I've got a feast ahead of me and I cannot wait. My favorite thing, thanks for asking, is apple pie. That's the traditional. But we're from Boston. And so seafood is super important to my family, and we do clams casino and scallop trapped in bacon for like appetizers, and it is, oh my god, I love scallop trapped in bacon. It is the best. Hmm? We do it for both holidays, so Christmas and Thanksgiving. There's always seafood on the table, and it's my favorite thing. It is so good. All right, we got things to do though, because we've got to learn some things today. Here we go. So. Week 15 is the heading. Make sure you know you're on week 15. Okay, we are doing global economic development. Ugh, my migraine. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, a couple big things you do need to know. So imperialism is happening in full force in Africa and Southeast Asia. Imperialism is happening in full force in Africa and Southeast Asia. Technically, what's happening in China? Macy, spheres of influence. Who can tell me the difference between imperialism and a sphere of influence? What do we got, Nicole? There you go. So it's only happening in China. It's only the control of the economy. Make sure you understand that difference. We went through it pretty closely last week. Okay, so what we are doing here, when we're talking about global economic development, we are really focusing on raw materials, and that is the big thing. So technology, here we go. Some of this is going to be things that we continue to talk about. Uh, railroads are not new technology. Just know that more railroads are being built now than ever before. Now, like around the world. Because when we were talking about 
railroads before. It was really happening in Europe, Russia, and the Americas. Now they're building railroads in Africa. Why are they building railroads in Africa? Abby? Um, to transport raw materials. Yes. You need to know that railroads are necessary for exporting raw materials. Okay, you're gonna put a big star. Put a big star. Imperializing nation are building up infrastructure in their imperialized colonies for the sole benefit of the home nation. Okay, one more thing we're gonna add to that. Long term, it does benefit the industrialized nation. There are very few positive things that are gonna come out of imperialism. Infrastructure is going to be one of them. Okay, so you need to understand that these imperializing forces, specifically the British and the French, are going to be building all of these things. They're going to be building bridges, railways, they're going to be building canals. All of those things are going to be one of the few benefits of imperialization. However, are they doing it to benefit these people? No, no, they're doing it to benefit themselves, but long term, it is going to benefit the imperialized nation. So that's one of the few things. Okay. Um, a big thing that you need to know is that the British are going to be the biggest builders of infrastructure. The British are the biggest. So in countries that are conquered by the British, they're the ones who are going to get more positives than others. Now, are we saying that imperialism is justified because they built infrastructure? No, no, we're not, John. However, it is one of the very few positives. Okay, so what country do you think has more railroads than any other colonized, imperialized country? If it's the British, India. And why would India have the most railroads? Uh, uh, Amelia? No. It's the jewel of the crown. It has the most raw materials. That is where they need to get as much out as possible. Okay. Here we go. Steamships are your next ones. Okay. Now, it is important. It is going to make trade faster, which we've already kind of talked about steamships. The biggest change that we're seeing now is refrigerated steamships, which now we can move meat. And does anyone know where more meat comes from than anywhere else? Dawson? <laughs> well, cows are everywhere now. So the Brit uh, Spanish are going to bring them to America. Obviously, we know Texas has plenty of cows, right? Don't they eat, like, steaks for breakfast over there? Uh, Katie? Is it, Latin it is Latin America. Specifically, Argentina has one of the largest uh, cattle herds in the world. Um, and guess who is going to exploit the shit out of that? The U.S. Yay! So, did you know most of your red meat that you buy in the store is from? Yeah, it's actually from, a ton of it is from Argentina. Uh, not all of it, some of it is coming from Texas, right? On? Yes. As you're texting away, you're texting your friends to tell them about how Argentina is the largest cat, uh, cattle. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff, I know. Mr. Jackson, did you have a question? Well, I was like, So meat prices are going up because gas is up, uh, inflation is up, uh, cost of getting feed for animals and all that stuff to feed the animals so that we can eat them is going up. So costs across the board are going up. So that's why those types of things are going up. Not because we're importing more, but because the cost of everything is going up because of inflation and gas prices and all those things. The good thing is gas prices are finally going to start heading down slightly. So that's exciting. I can't. I can't with you. I need to say, I've said that to him. All right, telegraph, ladies and gentlemen. We've already talked about the inclusion of it, but now it's instantaneous. 
And this is going to make European na nations more powerful. Why? Yes, instantly. So if they're starting to have trouble in a place, can they respond quickly and suppress it? Hello? Yes. The American Revolution would not have won if it was during the time of the telegraph. We would have lost. Is it that sad? I mean, the fact that we won is a fluke, guys. If we did it again, we would have probably lost. Like, five times, uh, we wouldn't have won. We shouldn't have won, but we did, because we're amazing. All right, raw materials. So these are the major raw, raw materials. I don't want to be here. Raw materials, these are the major ones, okay? Now, the process, which is what you're going to write for your next subheading. So, raw materials, the process. They are grown in colonies, harvested by locals, exported to the industrialized nation, manufactured, sent back, colony forces locals to purchase items okay so how it works is okay so locals are harvesting raw materials raw materials are then exported to industrialized nations they're manufactured then sent back to colony where they force the locals to buy it. So you're growing cotton because you're forced to by the Dutch. You sell the cotton at an incredibly low price to the Dutch because you're forced to. Then the Dutch take it, put it on a ship, send it to the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, they turn it into this ugly cotton fabric looking thing. They put it on a ship, send it back to the island in which you live on, and then they say, hey, locals, buy this ugly fabric. And you're like, I don't want this ugly fabric. And they're like, well, it's the only fabric you can buy. And they're like, shit, I guess we'll buy the ugly fabric. And guess what? Do you think it's cheap or do you think it's super expensive? <laughs> super expensive. So this is how the process works. And this is how the uh, industrialized nations are making tons of money. Nicole? Because they don't want to build factories in these countries because they don't want to teach the locals. So they could just like make them and just give them money without having to do all that. What do you mean? Like wouldn't that be like like they're like forcing them to buy it, but yet they're spending all this time to do it when they just can give them money for it anyway. Can they just like force them to give them money instead? Instead of making the product, just forcing them to pay. Well, they're also selling the product to other people. Oh. And like sending it around and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, it's, they're just limiting the options. Like, for instance, cotton is your next heading, okay? Britain will become the largest producer via its colonies of cotton in the world. The United States will be second. So you need to know that Britain is the largest producer of cotton in the world after 1860. Okay, who is the leading producer of cotton pre-1860? America, but the American Civil War is going to throw a wrench into that. Um, and then obviously freeing all of the labor required to harvest cotton is going to stop cotton production. We can all agree in a moral way, absolutely, but we also see on an economic way it's going to throw the American South, which was what we were just talking about, how the American South is super poor. Why? Because it was based entirely on the cotton economy. Well, the cotton economy is going to dry up and the British are going to take over the opportunity. India and Egypt are going to be the largest producers in the world after 1860. Yeah, that's why they have all the Egyptian goods. That's why they have all the stolen artifacts. Are you in AP Art History? No. Okay, well if you're in AP Art History, Brendan goes on a big rant about the British and the antiquities of Egypt. The best Egyptian museum in the world is in London. Yeah, the bet one of the best Greek exhibits in the world is in London. Yeah, and there's also one in Germany. That's really cool. 
Ren hasn't seen that yet because it's not finished and he doesn't want to go to Germany until it's finished. Here we go. So, cotton is going to be really spearheaded by England. You need to know Egypt and India are the two largest producers of it. You also need to know that um, it is going to... There was something else I was really going to say, and it was going to be like super impressively wow. <laughs> and it's gone now. Never to be seen or heard from again. So when we're talking about cotton, you do need to know that it is the most important raw material uh, throughout the entire industrialized age because of textiles. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Forever and always. Okay. Rubber. Okay, Robert, you do need to know that Charles Goodyear creates this new process called vulcanization. I have no idea what that is. I do. What is it? Okay, so I don't know the process, but basically, like, before, rubber got soft and it was hot and it's hard, but it's still a new process to fix that. Oh, so it's hot, it's hard? So it's cold and soft when it's hot and vulcanization. Oh my god. It's in the book. There you go. There you go. Vulcanization. So it's going to make it possible. Now, why all of a sudden is rubber super popular? Guys, what? Guys, it's called Goodyear. Goodyear. There's a brand in the world called Goodyear. Blitz. Damn it, people. No, Goodyear tires is why we have the blimp. Are those the ones with flying? Yes, Hermes, yes, is a thing. Yes, okay. So, what we're going to have is we, why do we need tires? Cars. Cars. Automobiles start becoming one of the most in-demand items in the world. Guys, come on. <laughs> okay, they are becoming one of the most uh, desirable items in the world, and we're also going to start seeing it being used in other items. Like today in 2021, for instance, my husband, while we were in Boston, decided he wanted to go into Lululemon. And he bought these Lululemon dress pants-ish. They kind of look like dress pants, but they're not really dress pants, but they kind of look like dress pants. And they have elastic in the pants, which us ladies have been living with quite some time, which is the best. With that being said, McCray purchased his first Lulu's this past weekend, and he has already ordered four more pairs, <laughs> including the joggers. He loves his little joggers. He even took them to Chicago, which is where he's flying back to. I'm pretty sure he's wearing them right now on the plane. With that being said, late, uh, when we talk about it, it's the latex, which is a derivative of rubber, is going to start being used in multiple products. I just want you to know my husband is obsessed with Lululemon, and it's been a week, and I've heard about it every single day. By the way, please ask how much Lulu his wife owns. None. Zero! Zero! Because I'm poor! Are you going to show Lulu? No, we don't. He's getting four pairs of pants. Yeah. Well, he makes, like, a lot, a lot of money. And I'm too practical to spend $148 on a stupid pair of jogging pants? Are you kidding me? He's getting a new something. He's literally, we got home from Boston, he put in the first load of laundry, and then but two hours later, he had them back on. Are they cheaper? I didn't even look. Okay, moving forward, do not buy Lululemon clothes because apparently you'll get addicted, and my husband's upset. Get some for your baby. I don't think they make baby clothes. Well, they should. Maybe girls. Well, he is a toddler. I mean, he's not a baby anymore. He's a monster. <laughs> Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, you do need to know the conditions in rubber. I don't think they call them treat. Like, they don't, I don't know what they call them. Are they plantations, rubber plantations? Are they farms? Got it. Okay, rubber farms, okay, are atrocious. They are some of the worst conditions, okay? No, actually, the Congo doesn't actually have that much rubber. Um, you're going to see most of it in Southeast Asia. Uh, in the Congo, they have diamonds. That's the big thing. They have mines. Like, they're specifically mining in the Congo, which is why the uh, conditions are so terrible. 
So it is very, very expensive, which makes it very, very valuable. And it's also a new commodity. All of these factors make this whole thing a high pressure situation. And that is going to be a loss for the indigenous colony. Does that make sense? Because these Europeans are trying to capitalize on this huge upstart all of a sudden. Places that were not focuses are now major focuses because of how much wealth is in these places. You're also going to see huge amounts of deforestation, deforestation that is occurring all around the world because of it. Most of your deforestation at this point is going to be because of rubber trees. We're going to have some lumber still, of course. We're going to start having specialty woods that will become popular in the 1970s. But right now, we're going to see mass deforestation because of the value of rubber. It's in a tree. It's kind of like sap. It looks like you've you seen like syrup, maple syrup. It's like that. It drips out of a tree. It's bizarre, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, What's it's pretty name? cool. What do you got? Which one? This one? Yeah. Oh, um, these are all of your wealthy European nations, and these are all the people that they're crushing with all of their goods and all their demands. Oh, the top, top one? This is, um, I think this is supposed to represent the United States, or it could be England, because they, ha uh, no, it's got to be the United States, actually. United States, and these are all the companies that are fat and wealth and power who are pushing their will through Congress. Right. They're supposed to be. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in your rubber, you do need to know that they are going to promote slavery. Why is rubber going to promote slavery while cotton is not? Think about it logically. What has been around since the dawn of time? Oh, God. Okay, yeah. Cotton has been. Cotton has been around for a very long time. And so the demand for cotton is constant. It has always been there with the industrialization from the very beginning. That demand has been very stable. Rubber, no one cares about it. Then everyone cares about it. And because of it, they're in locations that don't have large populations. So they're going to uh, enslave the locals in order to harvest it. Because in places where cotton has been growing for centuries, these are places that are well populated because everyone knows this is a valuable crop. Does that make sense? With rubber, which has no one has really cared about, now everyone cares about, these are in places that are really rural and far removed from like your typical civilized places. So because of that, there's not very large populations near these places. So it's not like the Europeans can pay people. They have to bring people there, which is going to promote this whole idea of slavery. All right. Palm oil. Despite the fact that it is delicious in Nutella, it is going to keep machines lubricated. Every machine you own, whether it is a coffee machine, or it is the hinges on a door, everything has grease to keep the metal parts moving. Okay, palm oil is very important uh, because of its high uh, heat rate. It can hold a ton of heat before it starts losing its uh, lubrication. So that's why it's important. It is going to be so valuable in some places it'll be used instead of cash. Okay. Now, it is going to be done in West Africa. It is going to be done in West Africa, which is controlled by the British. And that's important for you to know that. That's where most of it is coming from. The British have been anti-slave since 1802. That's unfortunate because, like, they have this new cash crop and they're in Africa and they don't want to pay these people, so they come up with a new system. It's not slavery because it's convict labor. No, the Kovri is Dutch. Okay, so they're going to use convict labor, also prisoners of tribal war. So it's not the British enslaving them, it's the locals who are enslaving them and they're benefiting. Which is what, ladies and gentlemen? That's 
apartheid, which will eventually come in in South Africa, but it's also slavery. <laughs> okay. Now, convict labor. Is that something we did here in the United States? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From, nine, uh, from the 1860s to the 1930s, they would arrest black men, and then they would force black men to be farmers and local farms for free. Huh. Do you think maybe they arrested more men than they needed to work the farms? Yes. All right. Ivory. Here's your next one. Ivory is from tusks, okay, and it's coming from Africa, mostly a little bit in Asia, but mostly in Africa, okay. It's so valuable that the French are going to control it. Yeah, that's a modern day picture. That's from, every once in a while you hear of a big capture of um, people in Africa are still, poachers are still killing elephants for their tusks. Because you can't take the tusk off an elephant unless the elephant's dead. So they have to kill the elephant to get the tusks off. Does anyone know what are some 2021 solutions to this problem? What are they doing? Oh, Victoria. Huh? Yeah, just so they are cutting them off. So they are replacing them with fake ones, which is one of the options that they're doing, but it's very invasive and it's really hard to do. What are they doing, Janelle? Yeah, they dye in bright pink now because no one wants a bright pink object. <laughs> so they're dyeing in bright pink in order so the animals can still have their natural tusks, which are super hard, which they use for defense. Um, and they get to keep the husk, but no one is going to kill an animal for their, for their bright pink husk. They only want the white ivory ones. So that's pretty cool. Um, Poachers now can get executed in brutal ways by African governments, which is pretty cool. It's supposed to help to keep them down. And actually, one of the most effective Kenyan uh, safe places for animal uh, for elephants are actually protected by women's snipers. The female snipers are the most effective at killing poachers. If you show up to an animal res uh, elephant reserve with a gun that is not sanctioned by the government as a poacher protector you're considered a poacher and can be killed on site and these women kill like 30 40 every single year and they have the largest population of elephants under their protection hell yeah women killing it killing the damn poach sorry women in court they're like they're not like foam but they're not like like Hard. They're fighting each other, but they, there's not that many animals left, so they're not really fighting as much as they used to. Okay. Moving forward, minerals. Okay, uh, mineral ore. What we're seeing is these are going to be used in like tin and stuff like that. These are going to be used in metal products. So your softer metals. Um, this is in like iron ore, which is going to come from the ground as well, which is going to be used to make iron. These are for soft metals like tin. These are also becoming a high demand item. Okay. They're also going to be used in electrical lines because they're really good uh, conductors, which is a huge thing and is a new modern day problem. And these are really coming out of Africa. We also, of course, have gold and silver still moving around, but copper is like one of the big ones, and that's mostly coming out of Latin America and Africa. Okay, and then you have diamonds. The Seal Roads and the De Beers Mining Company by 1880 will own 90% of the world's diamond mines. And I think they're now up to like 93% which I think we've talked about if you want to get run off track because you don't want to learn that day, ask him what, how much he spent on a diamond ring for Genoa. He hates it. He hates diamonds. He just found a gold tax. Oh, really? She didn't have one? He was asking the tax. He was like, do they go, or like, do they work and they put them in the, in the washing, washing machine? Like Sometimes they do. Some they don't. Mine was a washing machine. Yeah, my husband put his through the washing machine and it was fine. I mean, I'm a grown-up who can put mine in a box and not wash the box, but... Do you wear that box? Do you want 
That's your mom's fault, probably. Yeah, that's my fault. Good. Good for you for not blaming your mom. That's good. All right. Um, fun fact about Cecile Rhodes, she's going to be the prime minister of what will be South Africa. How do you think that's going to go for South Africa? <laughs> no, nope, he's going to be the guy who uh, leads to the apartheid. He leads the, he lays the foundation for what will eventually become the apartheid. This guy keeps showing up, people. You're just going to have to memorize him. I don't know, 600. He's not as old as Otto von Bismarck because we keep talking about that dude over and over again. Why? I don't like Steel Rhodes. Yeah, but they're about the same in like terribleness. All right, here we go. Agricultural products. Okay, so there's a couple things you do need to understand. Okay, there's a couple things you do need to understand that I want to take the time to talk about. So, when we talk about colonies, there's two types of colonies. Direct, which was what we'll start there. Direct are, are, let me try this again. Direct colonies are when a industrialized country takes over foreign country replaces their government with white people. See ya. Guys, we're in a really good spot. We're in a good spot. Look, there's only two sections this week too. Isn't that nice? See? We're in a good spot. I've never seen that. What? Well, dreams do come true, ladies. Dreams do come true. Have a good day. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope your week is full of pie and friends and family. And pie. Pie is the real key word here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.